What makes big leaps, big changes happen, looking back at history but also looking forward, allows us to start identifying areas in which we need to concentrate. And that's where the sensitive intervention points logic becomes very compelling because we can't do everything with everyone all of the time. So where should we focus on? I have to say it's a joy to be part of the conversation because I think that the idea that there might be quite specific almost surgical interventions that could make a big difference just because of where they're targeted, when they're targeted, with which powerful constituency you work with in order to effect a significant change, a change we have to make, there's an imperative here that we have to respond to, that's very compelling. These SIPs, that is in a way exactly what the world is looking for because we have all the knowledge. We know we need to do something. We need to do it in a much bigger scale. How on earth to do it? What is the right point to focus on? And if you can use here the amount of data and the systemic approach and identify the most effectful uh, points to, to intervene, that would be such a great thing to the world. A sensitive intervention point that uh, I, I find really fascinating is how we can flip uh, opinion dynamics. One of the key barriers uh, to change has been that there hasn't been sufficient political support in many countries uh, for a, a rapid and comprehensive transition. Uh, awareness of the problem of climate change, understanding the science has been growing. Um, but it hasn't been sufficient uh, to really force politicians to take strong action. Um, so how we can uh, uh, shift opinions and, and culture and moral norms that, that uh, addressing climate change isn't just important ec economically, but is also morally uh, the right thing to do, uh, I think is a really critical intervention point. Um, there seems to be a great deal of confusion about the energy transition. Nobody knows precisely what the state is, people are unclear about the direction of travel and even more the speed of travel. So how do we find the intervention that gets people onto the same page with regards to the intervention, in with regards to the energy transition? How do we get people to understand what precisely the way is that this energy transition is going to unfold? How do we get better information into the hands of decision makers? How do we improve the insights provided by the International Energy Agency, IRENA and other organizations? How do we make sure that people know where we need to head to with regards to the energy transition? One of the uh, presentations in our meeting today that I was particularly excited about uh, was on using uh, new data sources to understand uh, the energy system. Uh, uh, the researchers showed satellite data uh, that can help us map in detail the energy system of the world uh, and help us understand better uh, how it works and where these sensitive intervention points to transforming it uh, might be. And I think we're going to need these new uh, innovative, uh, innovative methods uh, to help us um, uh, be more targeted in our policies and our interventions. I think that there are really many interesting uh, potential issues here, but I think this on the taxation thing, for instance, we all talk about how can we get pricing right, but exactly how do you do it? We have been discussing this for 10 years, if not much more, and all the financial institutions in the world would say, in theory, we should do more here. How come that we are not doing it? If we could really identify what works, which argument works, what are the consequences, what are the co-benefits, and be much clearer about that, that would be a fantastic SIP to identify. We definitely can leverage finding those sensitive intervention points to have the biggest impact and therefore achieve climate goals. Uh, we have to do everything we can, we're running out of time uh, and finding the precise intervention point is therefore crucial.